to my channel and tell your friends to come over here and subscribe too i talk about fashion business lifestyle we do vlogs lookbooks and everything like that so make sure you guys subscribe to my channel so let's get right into it so the met gala happened on september 13th if you know then originally the met gala is always on the first monday in may but it was postponed due to covid so it happened on september 13th which is a very historic thing to do because like i said it's always been on the first monday in may um there's a whole documentary about it and about the creating a met gala and it's always on the first monday in may but covid has caused a lot of new things and you also have to have a vaccination when entering so just keep that in mind um so the theme this year was in america a lexicon of fashion so when they're given the theme it's up to them to present their take on what they think the theme means and that's why they always get asked on the red carpet what did it mean to them what was their take on their look tonight and what the theme is and how does it correlate and i also want to give some flowers to kiki palmer she did an amazing job she was one of the press reporters on the red carpet at the top of the stairs right before you enter that is a major spot to be also but she did an amazing job she held the conversation she told information to them without the person she's talking to have having to tell her and when you sign up for a job, you make sure that you do that job properly, especially with something like this. You make sure that you do your research and that you know what you're talking about and you know who you're talking to. And she did exactly that. And for me watching it, she definitely carried the show. She made it more black, if you ask me. And a lot of the black girls and black people who were there and talking to, to her, they, they felt more comfortable. Like they felt more comfortable. They felt like this was something for us that's what i was getting and that's what i was loving but yes kiki palmer did her thing they need to bring her back every year because this was her first time and they need to have her there every time so aside from giving her her flowers for doing her job and doing it well she had on an amazing look and she looked beautiful she had on a sergio hudson dress she was channeling her inner um diana ross and she looked beautiful so Wanted to start off with talking about Kiki because Kiki definitely did that and I enjoyed myself because I watched it on Vogue.com. They live streamed it. It was a great way to watch it. You got lots of information. You see the perfect looks. Like if you're interested in watching it, I had a great time watching it on Vogue. So the co-chairs for this year's Met Gala included Naomi Osaka, Billie Eilish, Timothy Chalamet, and also amanda gorman which is the woman who did the speech the poem slash speech at the inauguration yes black girls um but let's get into naomi's look since we mentioned her so she had one a louis vuitton look that was designed by not only her in the creative director but also her big sister helped to design the dress as well like that's great and it represented her japanese and haitian heritage so i thought that that was great that she in incorporated her heritage into her look um so now that i've told you when it happened the history of the day the people who were the co-chairs kiki doing her thing let's get into the looks of everything so the theme for this year was in america a lexicon of fashion that is a very broad um theme to give people so it's up to them on how they're going to perceive that what they're going to come looking like and it looked like a lot of confusion um everybody kind of was on a different page and when i first heard what the theme was before it happened i just seen the in america and i'm just going to say i thought 
white America, so I didn't really know what to expect. I'm like, you know, it's not really the climate for that to be the theme. We could have came with something better. But after doing my research, the theme is supposed to be about American fashion. So aside from everything else about America, we have a lot of great fashion here. We have a lot of great designers. So it was supposed to embody that. And also, I guess people could perceive it as different American themes like old Hollywood, which some people did. So the exhibit, as you guys know, the Met Gala is for the exhibit and it's gonna be two parts, part one and part two. The first part came out on the 18th, September 18th. And then the second part releases May 5th, 2022. And they both last until September, 2022. So the first part is in America, a lexicon of fashion. And then the second part is in America, an anthology of fashion. So that's great that they're doing, or different that they're doing two different parts. And yeah, I hope that I can go and see both of the exhibits before they are out. So fingers crossed for that. Um, so let's get into these attendees. So it was a lot of first timers. And I think that that's a reflection of all of the new artists, all of the new people that are just in the different music and entertainment industries and they all were showing up. But I do feel like it was a lot of people who I wish came that did not. Um, because if you're interested in that gala or you like fashion, you want to see the people that you really like and what they're going to do for Met Gala. And I think that you didn't get the chance to really see that because there were a lot of first timers, but that's great that more and newer people are getting the chance to be able to attend but i do think that's why it was so safe a lot of people played it really safe because if it's your first time going you don't really know what to expect you kind of trying to make sure that you on theme but you want to you know still look good and i think that the best advice if you're going to attend the met gala is do the most and then do more than that and then that's going to be your look and you might end up as best dressed like just make sure you're on theme but do the most um so yeah i think that was one thing i wish i would have seen more of like the people we really wanted to that i really wanted to see um but we didn't really get the chance to but there were still some great people don't get me wrong and we about to get right into it um so first Shakari attended and I thought that was great to see her and that leads me into Lewis Hamilton which is a race car driver he paid for four upcoming designers to attend the Met Gala which was amazing for upcoming black designers to be more specific and then at their table included some more very important people including Shakari so um he had I don't want to pronounce this wrong but the designer of Theophilio, I don't know, I'm gonna put it on the screen, y'all. But the designer for, for that brand, which is a black owned brand, Kenneth Nicholson, um, Jason Rimber actually also sat, up, sat at the table. And then there was Law Roach, um, Luxury Law, if you guys don't know, he's a stylist. Um, he's Zendaya stylist. Uh, Alton Mason looked Chef's Kiss, he was at the table, Kehlani, and also Miles Charles Watson, which I learned was a Olympic fencer. Um, but Chaz and Shakari also, like I said, and she actually had on Theophilio also. I'm gonna learn how to say that because I don't wanna be pronouncing people's stuff wrong. Um, but it was actually created by Evan Thompson. So that's the, the designer behind that brand. But I thought that that was so great to purchase a table for upcoming designers, black designers to sit at, as well as other iconic black people in the industry sitting at that same table. Like, I thought that was great for him to do because that's the point. And upcoming designers deserve the, deserve the opportunities as everybody, the same opportunities as everybody else too. Um, so we mentioned Alton Mason, but let's get into his look. So he gave us an all white pearl look that was also designed by Evan Thomas for his brand. The, I don't want to pronounce it wrong again, but y'all know who I'm talking about. But an all white look styled by Law Roach. And he looked amazing. Like his bone structure, his look, he was, he was a model and he was getting model at the Met, like model at the Met. And he is somebody who looked great to me. Now, 
there are going to be people that I say look good, but that don't mean that they were on the thing. So before we move on to somebody else, I'm going to just say this. Like I said before, I think there was a lot of confusion. I think that the theme was very vague and that left a lot of room for people to just take a wild guess and you could tell. Like you could really tell. I wish that they definitely would have given more. Um, so my list and the people I'm telling you about today isn't more so because I really, really like their look overall for the theme, for how it came out but they looked good. So yes, I just wanted to point that out before we move forward because everybody looked confused. Everybody really looked, really looked confused and I don't understand how there were European designers being worn on the red carpet when it's a theme about in America. Like even if you're confused about what else to do, I definitely would have picked an American designer. But also a lot of people tied it in well using non-american designers but also giving their perception on in america so next is allison felix she is an olympic track star um she looked amazing she was styled by jason bowden and she was wearing fendi couture and she looked amazing i loved how whimsical and like very like her look made her present and she just looked beautiful like the makeup was great the hair was great and it was her first time attending so she did a great job um normandy had on a valentino very vibrant and pretty yellow dress worn with lorraine schwartz jewelry um i really liked her look i don't necessarily know what her what her perception was around why she chose that particular look. Um, but she looked good. So that's what I'm saying. She looked really good. But I don't know. Like, I don't, I can't say she was on theme because I didn't see how. I'm not saying she wasn't, but I just didn't see how. For me seeing her, I didn't really see it. But she looked good. Um, next is Jordan Alexander, the girl from Gossip Girl. Um, she had on a Christopher John Rogers look, and I love Christopher John Rogers. He is a black designer, and he does amazing work. Like, if you don't know who Christopher John Rogers is, definitely look into him. Um, he actually just had a collaboration with Target, and it's so out, like, gone within just a couple hours. So, yes, if you don't know, definitely look him up. He's won a CFDA award, all that. Um, Erica Badu, she attended with Lil Uzi. They both had on Tom Brown looks. Tom Brown was on the carpet a whole lot. People had him on their body. Amanda Steinberg had him on. MJ Rodriguez had him on and looked like great. Everybody who had on his looks definitely looked good and definitely gave their, their vibe. Like it was definitely like it was giving them like I see why they picked that designer for the person who designed their Met Gala look. Um, but yes, they all looked great. Mary J. Blige, she was giving us body. She was giving us black don't crack. She was giving us what Auntie Mary be giving us. That's what she was giving us. And she had on a Dundas dress styled by Jason Rimber. I love Jason Rimber. He also styles Issa Rae. Um, Sweetie, she had on a Christian Cohen look um, that definitely she was giving body to and she had her, she had the black flag and the Filipino flag hanging off of her and it looked great. I think it looked great. I understand where she was going with the theme. I do kind of wish she does something a little different. Like I feel like she's doing it, but there's a different a different something that she can tap into like i feel like i've seen something similar to this from her before and i want to see you know a little bit more um and she was styled by wilford lenov and yes she gave body like i said but one thing i will say before we move forward even though it was a lot of people first time i'm gonna keep saying it Make sure that when you come to the Met Gala, you are, you know how to pose. 
And I'm not saying people don't know how to pose, but posing is definitely something that you should heavily practice as, as you're preparing for the Met Gala. Because all it is is making sure you know what you're wearing and knowing how to pose when you're going up that red carpet and when you're going up those stairs. That's all it's about. Once you hit the top and you go in, you know, it's a party. But what you have to know is what you have on and how to pose. I feel like those are two of the most important keys about once you hit that carpet and i feel like a lot of people miss the mark because they didn't really know how to pose don't worry about who's shooting maybe you know you listen to come over here let's face us okay but just you don't you should never stop posing that's my opinion you should never stop posing on the red carpet and you should have your poses already on what you're gonna do okay but like I said, a lot of people's first time, and as they get to their second and their third time, we're going to see. And I hope that a lot of the people who attended and got the gist of what it's really giving, as the time goes on, they really start to give. Like, they really start to feel comfortable and giving the girls some looks and some poses and some pictures and some details. Um, but aside from Sweetie, Sierra came in her like a dress that was a rendition of her husband's jersey and she also had on his Super Bowl ring. Um, it was a dress created by Peter Dundas and it was inspired, like I just said, by his jersey. And she had on a Judith Lieber football bag. And you know, Judith Lieber is known for giving you a very cute, like itemized bag that's gonna cost you a very good coin. Um, yeah, she's known for giving you that bag, definitely. But she, yeah, Sierra gave you American football. She came with a dress that was like her husband's jersey and brought it all together. So she was on theme and I, I like it. It was a cute idea. It was a cute idea and the dress was cute. It was very cute. And she had a nice ponytail. I love a good ponytail. Um, next, we have Lil Nas X. And I don't care what y'all say about him. I love Lil Nas X. I don't really listen to his music, so I don't know. Don't ask me. But anyway, he just doing it to, you know, get y'all mad because y'all mad anyway. So I love him. He had on a three-piece Versace look, and he pulled a Lady Gaga from 2019 Met Gala when she had on three different looks. First, he had on an amazing coat. Took it off. He had on an armor suit took that off and then he had on an amazing bodysuit. So I'm definitely gonna be inserting pictures, but he gave us a Lady Gaga 2019 Met Gala moment and gave us three looks for one by Versace. So we love that. Um, then Jennifer Hudson came in a beautiful red ensemble, giving us Aretha Franklin because the movie just came out and I still haven't seen it. Um, but yes, it was an AZ factory dress and it was had a coat it was like i love a layered look like giving you a coat and then a dress and you could take it off it could be two different things and from me watching the live it was very heavy because when she got to kiki and was talking to her she was very tired um but we love it you gotta do what you gotta do for the fashion um so we love that then I'm gonna tell y'all my best. I know it's, I should save this for the end of the video. I'll tell y'all my favorite or best dress to me at the end. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna wait. Um, but Yara Shahidi, she had on, she was giving us like a Josephine Baker inspired look on theme. Um, and she wore custom Dior styled by Jason Bowden. And I, I love it. I love what she was inspired by. I love her take on the look. I feel like. Dior was a good designer to choose for that because it was all about the gown and she definitely channeled what she was trying to give like and I definitely respect that um Tiana Taylor she looked great like the body of course was giving and her clothing always plays onto that and we love that because yes she had on a, a look that was inspired by the Venus de Milo, which is a statue, I believe. Definitely Google it. Um, created by Prabhu Garong. And I, 
hope I'm not pronouncing it wrong, but that's who the gown was designed by. And she was styled by EJ King, but she looked amazing. Like she looked amazing. And she was definitely trying to give Rose in Harlem. She said that was a part of her inspiration, but she looked amazing. The body was giving, like I said, the face was giving. She definitely gave. And this brings me back to Kiki doing a great job. Every time she was talking to the black girls, every time she was talking to the black people in general, like it was like, this us, like this is like somebody, you seeing your friend, you seeing your family member at the cookout, like that's what it was giving to me. And I loved that, like I loved it because you don't usually see that from the Met Gala because if you be honest, but it was great to see. It was great to see. So I had to go back to Kiki because those were a lot of moments, a lot of great moments. Um, also, Megan Thee Stallion, I've seen a lot of people hating, like a whole lot of people hating. And I feel like Megan definitely gave on thing and she looked good. She gave us old Hollywood. Her glam was like literally chef's kiss. Her makeup, her hair, like her dress was created by Coach. And y'all know she got that deal with Coach. Come on, coin. I think she was definitely on theme. And she did it very well. Um, and I think that people just like to have something to say. Now, I do wish that I could have gotten more from her. I feel like she's another person who, of course, she's trying different things. But I see so much her style growing to so much more and being so much bigger and so I see a lot from Meg. Um, but yes, she had on a custom coach look, like I said, she was definitely on theme. Um, Gabrielle Union, her hair, we I definitely think it should have been a different hairstyle chosen, but she had on an Iris Van Harpen dress and it definitely looked really good. Um, it was black and white. I'm not I don't know what her take on the theme was. But she looked good. Like I said, a lot of these people that I am mentioning, they looked great. But were they on theme? Everybody was all over the place. Um, and then the model Precious Lee, she had an amazing look, style, I mean, designed by Aria. Definitely giving bedazzle. It was like a very nicely structured blazer dress look. I'm, like I said, I'm going to insert pictures, but it definitely was, she looked great. Um, Storm Reed wore Prada style by Jason Bowden. Um, my personal opinion of the look, she looked good, but I think she missed the mark. Like, I feel like the mark was kind of missed. We could have done something different, but maybe it's me. You have to do your own research and see it to decide for yourself. But for me, I feel like we could have did something else. Um, and then Jewel and Ambrose, she looked really, really good. You know, June Ambrose, the iconic stylist, looked really good. Chloe and Halle had on Rodart. They were, I believe, giving, I know for sure, Haley was giving Tina Turner. She was channeling her inner Tina, Turn Tina Turner. Um, but I'm not sure about Chloe's look. Um, but they both were designed by Rodart. They looked great. I love to see the sisters on the carpet helping each other and posing together. And they both look good. And they're both doing amazing. Chloe just came out with her new debut single. And yes, we love to see it. Um, and then now we're going to get into the best and the final. So when I was watching it, right, I told you I live streamed it on Vogue.com. I'm like, okay, Rihanna not coming. But Kiki was saying during the show that's who she was waiting for and that's not something you can be saying if they not gonna come so i'm like hmm do she know if rihanna coming because rihanna will dead maybe not come but she will definitely show up at the last couple minutes and pop in like so you never know so i'm like hmm is she coming so it's hitting the last literally kiki is wrapping up she's saying this was great y'all her and i don't remember the other lady's name who had the bottom of the carpet and they were working together on the carpet i don't remember her name but they were wrapping up and so i exited out it had been on for like three hours i was watching it the whole time for three hours and i turned it off later that night i found out that 
Rihanna came. So it must have been on some, all right, y'all, we about to go. And then they like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Which is how it does happen. And I don't know why I didn't wait. But I, I don't know. But she came, she showed up, and she had on a custom Balenciaga look that was supposed to be a replica of, like, the black hoodie and how black people and black men and women are harassed by the police simply because of wearing a black hoodie. So, we love that. Um, but, yeah, she had on a custom Balenciaga look with a Stephen Jones hat and lots of diamonds. Um giving us this is what i gotta say about it that's what she gave us and we love that we definitely love that um and also her responses to questions were hilarious and before we get into her res responses on the questions let's get into who was interviewing her so when i seen this i literally almost had a heart attack so Gia Peppers, she is a, I don't want to mislabel her, but she is like a journalist. She does hosting. She does on TV appearances. She, she does the things. And she's also a part of Black Girl Podcast. If you haven't heard, you should definitely listen to it. It's with her, Scotty Bean, who was on that show with um, Joe Budden. I can't remember what it's called is it state of the culture something like that but she was on there but they are on the podcast black girl podcast gia peppers all also does work with essence essence was at the met gala and who was their representative gia peppers i screamed because i see on her instagram that she was there and i was like that's amazing love that then i seen the pictures because like i told y'all i missed it so I seen the pictures of the back of her head and I was like, oh my God. Because y'all, working in these fields is hard and tough and being a reporter or being pressed inside the Met Gala, that is major. Like, that is literally major. And she did that. She did that. And I was beyond. I love that. But that was one part that got me. But um, she... Basically said her take on the theme in America was, I'm, these are her exact words, I'm an immigrant and that's my take on American fashion. Nothing else to say about it. Period. She attended with ASAP Rocky who wore a quilt that come to find out um, I don't remember the girl's name, but come to find out, the, the woman came out and said that that was her grandmother's quilt that they donated to a thrift store years ago. And the designer that designed ASAP Rocky's outfit for the Met Gala found that quilt and, you know, did things with it and created his look. Like, that's crazy. Weeks after you come to find out that your grandma quilt was on the Met Gala red carpet. Like, that's crazy google it that's crazy um but yes so now we're gonna get into my favorite my favorite was iman the supermodel she i love it i loved it and i'm just talking about one look like on the theme i don't know but the look it was beautiful. I'm definitely going to insert the pictures, but it was a look that was created in collaboration between Harris Reed and also Dolce & Gabbana. Um, and yes, she looked stunning. Like, she literally looked stunning. And that's my favorite. That's my best dress. Um, for more details, you can definitely check out my Fashion News Outlet at Young Stylish Lifestyle on Instagram. We have more of the Met Gala looks for you to see. Um, definitely to see more people, what they had on because we have all the details. So yeah, anybody I did not mention, you can definitely find them there. Um, but the Met Gala this year overall, I will say that there was a lot of confusion. A lot of people missed the mark. It definitely could have been more. A lot of people looked great, but that didn't mean that they were on the theme. Um, next time for anybody confused, I just want everybody to do the most when it comes to the Met Gala because as we see, that's what it's about. Like if you, even if you don't know fashion, you don't know the industry, 
the Met Gala is for you to literally do the most. Like, you can't play it safe. Like, no. This is fashion. And if you're not going to give fashion, you should not attend. So, yes, let's get into New York Fashion Week now. Now, like I said, with the Met Gala, you have to have the vaccination to, um, you have to have the vaccine in order to enter. For New York Fashion Week, you have to have the vaccine as well. And for many shows, I hear that you could not get in until unless you were 14 days after the second shot. I'm not going to go too much into detail. I'm just letting you know that that is, you know, what the stipulations were. So I feel like with a lot of the new rules and things, I didn't attend, sadly. Um, I wasn't able to attend New York Fashion Week. Definitely will be there next year. Um, if you don't know, I've gone before and I also have me vlogging and certain the Pierre Ma show on my channel. So definitely go watch that. Um, it's a little bit further down, but definitely go watch that. Um, I've been a couple times. But I could not go this year and I was very sad about it. But from what I've seen, it was kind of dry. Like it was kind of dry. And I think that has a lot to do with you needing the vaccine in order to get into a lot of things. Um, and to do a lot in New York in general. Um, they're very strict on their rules right now. But yeah, I felt like it was a little dry. Even from me watching uh, influencers YouTube videos and stuff on Fashion Week. It was just okay to me. But um I'm definitely going to give you a rundown on some of the things I did like. And the first being the Harlem Fashion Row Awards and show. Um, if you don't know, the Harlem Fashion Row was created by Brandis. Her name is Brandis on Instagram. You could just type in Harlem Fashion Row and read up more about them. But they do a show and an awards every year. Um, and this year they awarded some amazing people as they always do it's always a beautifully done show this year um it was on a street in Harlem and the show was outside in the middle of the street and then the stage and like the podium for them to give the awards was on a stoop it was very cute um but yes lots of great people were awarded um it was collections from three black male designers of all male designers show love that it was jonathan hayden harrison studio and tier nyc you guys have probably heard of them but yes that's beautiful it's definitely if you didn't catch the gist harlem fashion row is black owned for us by us yes brandis has definitely created something amazing i can't remember her last name right now but you definitely will find her if you go on harlem fashion row um but she's created something amazing and we love to see it um, and awards were given to Zarina Akers for Stylist of the Year. You know, she is one of the stylists for Beyonce. She styles Chloe and Halle. She styles, um, who else does she? She styles Megan Thee Stallion right now. She's one of the first stylists. Yes, like she was, she is, she deserved that award. I'm going to just say that. And if you don't know who she is, definitely go look her up. She is a stylist to know. And if you're getting into the fashion industry, you definitely want to know what you're talking about. Know what you're talking about, know who's who, know what's what, know what the news is. That's very important. Um, Christopher John Rogers got Designer of the Year. Freddie Leba got the Lifetime Achievement Award. Um, Carlos Nazario got the Editor of the Year Award. Um, he's currently the Global Fashion Director at ID Magazine. Um, he's contributing editor for American Vogue. Um, Leah Khabib, Khabib, um, I hope that's how you pronounce it. She got the Fashion Icon Award. So it was a, some amazing awards giving out, giving out an amazing show that was done. And from one of the YouTube videos I did see, they said it was an amazing experience. And we love that. Um, also, some other news from Fashion Week. Telfar announced their new duffel bag and they were on the official fashion week schedule like that is so hype the love and the growth that they've gotten and had over the past about two years is amazing and all the talk about it's just a bag or it's not even all that if you don't want to buy it don't buy it but what you shouldn't do is try to deplete the value and the 
greatness of a black brand or a brand in general but especially a black brand because it's popularized and you feel like you should be the only one doing stuff that you like to do that's not cool because y'all wear all the same of all these other designers and don't see nothing wrong with it so now that they've got in their due diligence and got in their what they their flowers Telfar has got his flowers and people are liking it and people are buying it mind your business and if you don't like it keep going go on about your day don't buy the bag but don't say it's not a good bag so i just wanted to clear that up because if you don't like it you don't got to be involved with it but yes they announced their duffel bag and they were on the official schedule that is major um Tiana Taylor, as you know, or might not know, she is now the new creative director for Pretty Little Thing, and they had their first show at, with her as creative director um, during Fashion Week, and I felt like from videos that I saw, the show was a true representation of New York culture and Harlem culture, and I feel like Tiana Taylor was able to do that because she is from Harlem, um, so I it was a great show. Um, Juni, Tiana, and Iman's daughter was in the show. Like, it was great. It was very inclusive. It was us. And it was giving. Um, T I can't wait to see everything else that Tiana Taylor does with the brand as the creative director. She's already changing up some of the creative looks and the way things are going. And I like that. I like that. I think that she's going to do some amazing things with it. Um, next. This is something that happened during Fashion Week, so that's what I'm also listening, things that happened during Fashion Week and surrounding it. Um, Dapper Dan is doing a capsule collection with Pepsi, a watcher's collection for the football season, and it includes like loungewear, um, I believe it might include some bags, and it's just, go to your stylish lifestyle on Instagram to definitely see more details, and I'm gonna insert a picture, but to see a full rundown go there but i think that that is major i'm glad that he's finally getting what he deserves and that he's finally getting his flowers it's about time but i'm glad that he's getting what he deserves um and he's on the forefront of it versus someone trying to fake like they're paying homage to him no he's able to do his own things directly with someone that he was working with um so next, Laquan Smith held his show at the Empire State Building. He is the first designer to do that. Um, that's major. Um, and yes, we love Laquan Smith. Laquan Smith makes some amazing pieces. I feel like he gives you like sexy but make it fashion. And we love it. I also love the Christian Siriano collection. Um, like I said, I'm going to insert some pictures. He always does amazing collections and gives us amazing fashion that we need. That's why I feel like it's so important for the industry not to gatekeep and to allow newer talent to come in and build something new because they have we have a lot to offer. We have a whole lot to offer. It's a lot of designers, stylists all types of different positions in the fashion industry young fresh talent doing amazing things and it deserves to be seen and it needs to be seen and it needs to be recognized because a lot of things are played out and a lot of ways of doing things no longer work so you can't gatekeep something and ruin it we don't need to do that there's too much new talent and they're realizing um but Problem Go Wrong collection was also really good. You can find pictures of that on Young Stylish Lifestyle. Make sure you follow us and also subscribe to my channel. Um, but yes, he made some amazing pieces giving us color. Like, it was definitely giving spring, summer 22. Like, we love that. We love when you don't have to be confused about what collection a, a designer is presenting to you. Like, you don't have to be confused because is showing you exactly what it is through everything um and i keep saying we because i'm just used to doing it but i mean you know um moschino did a baby lady inspired show um so everything was kind of giving like the designs on the garments were giving like baby um i'm definitely going to insert pictures like i stated 
But that's about it that I have for New York Fashion Week specifically. Now, I haven't made a video since this happened, so I'm definitely going to mention this. Pierre Moss presented a collection for, what was it, Paris Fashion Week? This happened in July. Paris Couture, like, that is major. And he present, he did the show in New York at one of Madam C.J. Walker's estates. Like, that is major. I don't think I've mentioned that on my channel. And since we're doing a fashion video, I want to say that. That's major. Like, I love Kirby Jean Raymond. And Pierre Moss is a great brand that's being built. And we love to see that. So, I definitely had to mention that in all the people. I think I did say this. Or it was this could have been on my fashion news outlet. But um, all of the pieces were basically a rendition of all of the inventions Black people have created. The refrigerator. Um, everything that you can think of that we created. He had it on that chair. Even down to a folding chair. Like, he had it on in his collection we love that um for us by us but yeah new york fashion week was dry like we're currently in paris fashion week it started what is today is today no today's today yeah it started yesterday um the 27th and yeah i'm gonna see cardi looked good i just seen that just now um styled by colin carter she went to the moogler exhibit i believe that's what it said so definitely catch that on Young Savage Lifestyle on Instagram. Um, but yeah, New York Fashion Week. Mm. Even when I went the last time in 2019, it was dry. Like the Pierre Moss show saved Fashion Week, if you ask me. And then me attending the Tail Far show, like that was great. That was a great time. And that was an amazing way to do a show. Um, but it was dry, like. And it's been dry. But I hope that they're going to start to switch it up. Hopefully, I can be there next year. And I am manifesting invitations to shows all around the world. Um, so, yeah. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. And I hope y'all got some good information on the Met Gala and New York Fashion Week. Like I said, I will be inserting pictures. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. And I will see y'all in the next video. Peace out.